Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about how to terminate your LLC in California. If you want to shut down your LLC and stop being in business in California, either because you moved to another state and set up a new LLC there, or because you never launched the business or you're no longer having this business, you actually need to terminate it in California. Otherwise, you're still going to get bills for the $800 a year franchise fee taxes and potentially someone could sue the LLC. I mean, you, you want to close all that stuff up. So how do you shut down your limited liability company in California? Well, what you need to do is you need to file some documents to terminate it. Now, how, what how do you do that and what documents you file depends upon your exact situation. So we're gonna get into those details. But before you file, if you want to use the online filing system, which is California's new biz file system as of 2022, you're going to need to set a few things up first and check a few things to do that online filing. And also, even if you're going to do old fashioned PDF form that you print out and mail in filing, there's some things you need to check on first. So let's get into how to do that. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is go to the biz file online system and check on your LLC. Is it hooked up to your login account and is there any problem with it? So when you go to BizFile Online, if you're not already logged in, you're gonna see that there's forms that you can fill out. And you may think, oh, I can file the termination form here and you will be wrong because <laughs> there's no termination form here. How it works is that you first have to be logged in and have your LLC connected to your login account and then you can see the forms that you can file for the LLC. The idea is they don't want some like random person terminating somebody else's LLC. It actually is a good security practice. However, it can create some logistical problems. So the first thing you're going to do is create a login. If you click on login, if you don't already have a login, you can hit the sign up button and you can create an account by just putting in your email, password, first name, last name. It's fairly, fairly simple. So let's assume that you have done that and you're logged in. Now, the next part of this is getting your business connected to your login. So let's say you don't have your business connected to your login. I'm actually going to log out and there's no businesses because I don't have a login here. What you're going to do is search for your business. I'm going to put in my law firm, which is a corporation, but it's the same thing for doing an LLC, EPW Small Business Law. And I click on that and it comes up down here. Over on the side, it has a whole bunch of information, which we're going to talk more about in a minute. But at the very bottom, if you scroll down, it has request access. This is where you're going to request access to your LLC if you don't have access already. There's a couple different ways to get access to your LLC. First is if you created your LLC in the last month, <laughs> then you're gonna automatically have access in this system. Second is if you created your LLC using online filing in the last couple of years under kind of the old online filing system, you should have gotten an email to your email address to connect those up. You can create a login, it'll already be in, it'll already be in here, it's really nice. But let's say either somebody else created your LLC or you created it using, you know, filing something in the mail a long time ago. How do you connect it? Well, let's look in the help folder to see how to do that. If you click on help, the online help is actually a PDF, which is not the best help system, but here we are. And you scroll down to the outline for the help system and it has access to online business entity records. If you click on that, it'll go through how to get access. So if you request access and someone else has access, so let's say your lawyer, your accountant, legal zoom, whatever, someone else did online filing for you, they still have access to it. Then when you request access, it'll go to them and hopefully they will give you permission to do to access that system. But let's say nobody has access because it was created 10 years ago. The, what they what you, happens is when you request access, they send a letter with a PIN number to the address on record for your LLC. So hopefully that address is right. If that address is an address you have no access to, it's a wrong address, nothing's going to get forwarded, then you're going to need to change the address before you can do this. And you're changing the address, you're going to do that by filing a statement of information for your LLC which you can't do through this online system now because you have to be connected. So what you're gonna do is file it via paper. I'm gonna show you where the paper forms are in a sec. 
Then once you correct the address, you can come back and request access and get the letter with the pin and then connect it all up. So it's a lot of steps, but the idea is that it makes it more secure. Where do you get those forms? Anytime you want to see forms that are the PDF forms, you go to the homepage for the Secretary of State of California, go click on business, and you're going to want to find where the forms are. I have always found them be under hot topics. There's forms, samples, and fees for business entities. Obviously, this online filing isn't working if you need to file by mail or in person. So you click on Limited Liabilities California. And then you have the various PDF forms. They also have links to the online system. But they have the various PDF forms. The PDF forms all still exist. So if you scroll down, here's the one to do a statement of information via PDF, which you can do to change the address so you can get everything connected. And then also down here, we're going to look at the termination forms via PDF. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that so it opens this up. That's if you can't get anything connected and you want to do it by do it via PDF. And we're going to look at those forms to figure that, that out. But let's say you now have your stuff all connected. What do you do? So the first thing you're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and log in. The first thing you're going to do before you file anything is you got to make sure you can, which means that your LLC has to be valid right now. It cannot have administratively suspended in some way, shape or form. So how you do that is you, it should be under your records. There should be a bit, a list of business of things you have access to, but if it's not under your records, you can just search. So you can see here for my law firm, which is a corporation, but an LLC is going to have the same stuff here that I have active status, which is good that my standing, which is like, does this government agency have any problem with you or not? With the Secretary of State, which is SOS, is good. With the FTB, which is the Franchise Tax Board, which is taxes, is good. Agent, do I have a registered agent? Yep, that's good. And then this is about corporate fraud stuff, so hopefully that doesn't apply to you, but that's good for me too. All these things need to be good and you need to be active for you to be able to terminate. If typically what happens when my clients have a problem terminating, shutting down their LLC, it's because the FTB is upset with them and it'll say not good here. And that's because you didn't file your last tax return and you owe them the $800 of your franchise fee. That's, that's usually what happens. It's very common what happens is that someone forms an LLC and they never launch the business. And while in the first calendar year, you now don't have to pay the $800 of your franchise fee. Number one, you're supposed to still file a tax return. But then the next year happens and then that $800 a year becomes due, even if you literally never launched the business. So... Before you can terminate it, you have to go fix all that. Now, occasionally I have people who are like, I never launched this business. I don't care. I'm not going to terminate it. Uh, I'm just not going to pay the $800. What happens then? So people do that all the time. Don't get me wrong. People do that not in just in California. What happens is that if there's any pending lawsuits, liabilities, whatever, with that LLC, you're losing protection and that you might personally be liable for things theoretically possible for the FTP to come after you personally. I actually personally haven't seen it with anybody, but that doesn't mean it doesn't ever happen or that they won't do that in the future. So the idea of terminating things is to close the loop. So you are never personally liable for anything that the LLC does or doesn't do because you shut it down the correct way. But honestly, there's a lot of people who just let things go. It is a potential risk if you do that, however. So where do you find the forms? This is actually something that I'm hoping they're going to change because it's actually kind of messed up right now. How you find the forms is you pull up your LLC, you click on it, and then you go under file amendment. This isn't an amendment, but that's where all the forms are as of right now. Hopefully they're going to change the language on this and be like file form or something. But as of right now, when I'm recording this, on May 13th, 2022, it says file amendment. When you click on file amendment, a pop-up comes up and there's all kinds of forms you can file. Actually an amendment, conversion forms, and then election to terminate, and merger, 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 and termination. So what's the difference between election to terminate and termination? These names might be changed by the time you're watching this because it's not in congruence with the other terminology they use. I suspect that they're using language that's like the default for this system. I don't know. But there's three different potential forms. This, this particular LLC I pulled up 
only has two of them here because it's not eligible for the third form. But the three forms are the short form, which could be short form termination or short form cancellation, which is called the PDF form, which is where if your LLC was created in the last 12 months and you didn't launch the business, like you never actually started doing anything in the business. And it's kind of the short way to shut things down. The second form is called a certificate of cancellation in the PDF, or here it's called a termination. And this is kind of the normal way to shut down your business. And we're going to go into the details of it. The other form, the final form, is a certificate of dissolution in the PDF, but here it is called elect election to terminate. This is if you can't do the cancellation termination thing because you don't satisfy it, typically because all the members have not agreed to terminate. So if here's one person that one owner, it's no big deal. But if there's, let's say, five owners and four of them, the majority agree to terminate and one of them either refuses to vote or doesn't show up or has disappeared or says no, it's a much longer process. And to do that, you actually end up filing two documents. You file the election to terminate and the terminate, also call them the PDF, the certificate of dissolution and the certificate of cancellation. Yes, this is very confusing because they have different names in different places. So first I'm gonna go back to uh, LLC that's been filed in the last 12 months so I can show you the short form. So the termination short form if you form within the last 12 months, how does that look? When you get to any of your tar any document you're filing in this biz file system, the first thing you're going to have is a big privacy warning, and then you have to agree to it. I'm just going to be skipping some of these things because I don't want to accidentally um, shut down someone's LLC. You put in submitter information. This is your name, email, phone number. This doesn't go in the public file, but this is here in case something is messed up and they're going to contact you. This is optional, but I recommend putting it in there. Then there's some required statements. So these required statements, the requirement statements are things that have to be true for you to be able to use this form. So this is the short form. So it has to be an LLC that was formed in the last 12 months, which they know. But then also it has to be, it has no debts or other liabilities. All final tax forms have been filed or are going to be filed. So the only liability you have is the tax form that you're gonna file for like this year. All known assets remaining after payment of debts have been already distributed. The LLC has not conducted any business from the time of filing of the articles of organization. The idea is this is for an L a business that never launched. You try to set things up, it didn't work, and you're canceling before you started. 50% or more of the voting interest the managers voted and to dissolve the LLC, and that um, payments received by the LLC for interest from investors have been returned. So all that has to be true for you to use this particular termination. And then when it's effective, it's terminated. That's the kind of most simple version. You're going to pick a file date, which can either be to the today's date. So even if they process it a month from now, it'll backdate to today's date when you file this. You can pick a future file date where they're going to hold it and file it then, or a future effective date, which means they're going to review it, make sure it works, and then they're going to file, have it be official on that date. So if you're going to do a future effective date, that's what I would pick is the future effective date. If you want it to be like January, you know, December 31st, you want to shut out the end of the year, for example. I think with a short form, though, your business hasn't launched, so you're probably just going to want to shut it down immediately. I don't know why you would do the other thing. Then you have to do the electronic signature, and there's no processing fee in California for filing this kind of a document. So now let's go look at the other forms that you can file. So let's say that you actually did start the business. So you can't use the short form, but it's only one owner and you voted for this and you're fine. So you can, and you obviously agreed to it. How does that form look? Same privacy warning, same submitter. What you're saying is a little bit different. Was the dissolution made by vote of all of the members of the California LLC? And you're going to say yes. If you say no here, it says that you have to have already had an election to terminate, which is called a certificate of dissolution in the PDF. And we're going to look at that in a minute. So, but let's assume that everyone voted. You're going to say that all tax returns have been filed or will be filed. And that upon the effective date, the registration is canceled and everything ceases in California. Then of course you get to pick the file date in the same way. And then you review it and do your signature. But let's say there's ten, you know, five owners and only four of them agree. You're going to have to do it in multiple steps. So the first step you're going to do, let's go find this, is elect to terminate. 
which in the PDF is called Certificate of Dissolution. Same first part. So there, your election to terminate was caused by one of the following circumstances. Something from your articles of organization or in the operating agreement. So in your LLC operating agreement, which is kind of like a partnership agreement, you can have reasons that the LLC is going to be dissolved. It might be dissolved upon election of any member just deciding to dissolve it. It could be dissolved if everybody dies. Like there's reasons you could put in there. I usually don't have stuff like that. It's usually based on kind of the normal things, which is people voting, but you can put in there specific things that happen. Sometimes you set up an LLC only for a certain project. And so it's supposed to dissolve at the end of that project. So that could be one reason you could have something in there for that. Vote of 50% or more of the voting interests. The passage of 90 consecutive days during which the LLC has no members except on the death of a natural person who is the sole member of the LLC status of the member, including membership interest, may be passed to the heirs. So all the members have quit and it's been three months and there's nobody who owns it. And then the entry of a decree of judicial dissolution, which means a court has ordered it. Then you can use this form. This election does not terminate it. What it does is it starts the beginning. So one thing, whenever you shut down an LLC or a corporation for that matter, you have to go through a process of winding up. This is where you add up all the assets and you add up all the debts and you use the assets to pay off the debts. You terminate all your contracts, you shut down all the accounts, all that stuff. And then hopefully you have enough assets to pay off all the debts. And then anything left over, you... And when I say the debts, I'm also including paying your last tax return, the $800 of your franchise fee if you owe it. And then at the very end, you can pay out whatever's left to the owners if there's anything. Now, by the way, if you have an LLC where the assets can't pay off the debts, you have to notify those creditors, especially if you're going to take assets out to give to yourself instead of paying off the debts. You cannot do that. It only is You can only give money to yourself after the assets have paid off the debts. You have to give notice to the creditors. And you, if there's enough money at stake, they may force you to have the LLC actually declare bankruptcy. So let's say the LLC has $1,000 left. The checking account has nothing, but you have 100 grand of debts. You have money owed to people whose inventory you ordered. You have loans you've taken out, you know, all kinds of debts that are out there. Somebody may want to call you on those debts and open up a bankruptcy to take that thousand dollars and divvy it up because maybe they think there's actually more assets there. Maybe they think you have inventory, whatever. Just something to be aware of because I think that some people think that you can just terminate an LLC and all the debts go away, but it is more complicated than that. Okay, so if you have a significant amount of debt and a tiny amount of assets and you want to shut down your LLC or corporation, you may want to talk to an attorney, you may even want to talk to a business bankruptcy attorney. It may make more sense to do a bankruptcy just to tie off all those loose ends. So let's say you can't do this online filing because you couldn't get it hooked up. So then what do you do? So let's go to the certificate of dissolution, certificate of cancellation, the PDF stuff, which I will have linked. So, there's a, so when you do this, you're gonna use a PDF and type into it, you're gonna sign it with a pen and you're going to mail it to the state of California. And it has a place for you. It gives you the information of where to mail it to. And you write a check for anything, but for this, it doesn't have any um, fees. So first you have the certificate of dissolution. This is if 50 if you didn't have all the members, the owners of the LLC agree. And you get the same boxes that you check, you choose from. You put in the number, the name of the business, and then the 12-digit entity. So the 12 digit for my law firm is this 3512260. It's going to be that number in parentheses. And then you sign it and send it in. The certificate of cancellation. This is if the business has been in running, but all the members agree. Here, same thing. You put in the name, the 12 digit number. You check this box because it's true. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to file this form. And then everybody signs. In the best case scenario, you want all the members to sign. That's just going to be the best solution. So there's no debate that everyone agreed. Then the last one is the short form cancellation. This is if the business has only been around for 12 months or less and it never launched. It's a short version of that. And then you're going to be canceling it. You do want to make sure that when you dissolve your LLC, you have wrapped everything up. 
that there's no random checking accounts that are open. There's no assets sitting somewhere in the name of the LLC because the thing is the LLC no longer exists. Everything needs to be resolved. So make sure you take care of all that before you shut down your LLC. Otherwise, it's a legal mess. This is a short version of how that works. I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any questions about terminating your LLC in California, feel free to go ahead and ask them below in the comments and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to support the channel in making more videos like this, you can join as a Patreon member. The link is also below. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.